Big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for making this channel happen. If you also want access to my online swing dance school, consider supporting us on Patreon. Jamin here, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on anything I produce on this channel. I'm gonna be taking a look at a Jack and Jill finals competition at Korea City Cup 2022. You guys know about me. I love the Korean Lindy Hop community. It's one of my, if not my favorite swing dance community in the, on the planet. And the dancers are so technically proficient. So let's see what they have to offer in this one. Now I will tell you guys my perspective just a tad bit before jumping into this one. I'm gonna be looking for something a bit more imaginative. These dancers typically have no problem with technical, um, execution of the technique and so i won't be really looking at that much but i will be looking for my favorite couple i want to venerate complexity and uniqueness so let's see what happens all right here we go all right folks one two three four five six seven eight couples great song and they are on the move, folks. All right, so right now, my eyes are just kind of perusing through everyone equally. And I will say there's just a homogenous tone you know, everyone's kind of pulsating the same way, but there are one or two couples, I'm not gonna say who yet, that are standing out to me. And they're standing out to me because they are moving not as much as everybody else. And it doesn't seem to be an intimidating factor for them to stand out. Yeah, here we go. I'm just amazed at what these dancers can do in a Jack and Jill format. Many of you all watching don't understand, but the Jack and Jill format is not choreographed. It's just two dancers who understand swing dancing technique, and they're able to work with each other in a, a very spontaneously creative way. So it really says a lot when you can do that, and it actually looks choreographed. Right. All right, all right. See those little surprises like that? really go well in a competition format. Nice little break, nice little break.
Yes. So again, like I prefaced earlier at the beginning of this video, the common denominator here with between all of the contestants is their ability to do the technique flawlessly. I don't really see any couples. I would say about 97% of these couples are equal when it comes to their execution of the technique. The hard part now is who's, who's gonna choose to be distinct. And I have to say there's been one or two couples that have tried a few things outside of the ordinary that I really like. All right, all right. Yeah, good swing outs. <laughs> yeah, hitting the ground. I love it. Yes. Okay. I love his audience. They don't stop yelling. I love that. Very supportive of the dancers. And it does help, I tell you. I'm definitely gonna admit that. The audience just energizes you. <laughs> She's like, I'm not doing push-ups.
right, lining it up. Yes! Looking good, looking good, guys. All right, I'm gonna wrap this one up, give you guys my thoughts. This was awesome. Yeah, folks, that was good. <laughs> I just, I wanna applaud everybody who performed in this uh, competition. I gotta say, it's quite entertaining when I see uh, new dancers get out there and they really are just fresh and excited about swing dancing. I don't really see a whole bunch of restraint now, in Korea, again, like I said, the, tech, the technique of the dancers is so high that I had to shift my perspective on what I value and what I needed to judge. I'm liberated because they're so technically good to now judge them based on what I normally like to judge the open level on. And that is, can I get a snapshot of the future, the future leaders, the future inspiring dancers? Who are these dancers going to become? And I get excited about thinking about the potential. And so when I was looking at this one today, I was really seeing what a lot, uh, seeing in dancers, many of the things that they will be tempted to change about their dancing in the next couple of years. Now I'm gonna highlight some of these things that I liked and hopefully try to construct a super dance couple. <laughs> from from pieces of many of the dancers that I like. So let me first highlight, the couple I like first was this couple right here. They, let's see, she had, uh, yeah, she had uh, like a tiger looking dress with green and he had black shirt, uh, brown pants. As they come out, this couple right here is what I really liked in terms of visual style. I like how choppy the leader's syncopated movements are. I like her smoothness to contrast his uh, irregular movements. And I feel like this was the most unique dancer out of all of the ones that I watched today. None of his body uh, positions look conspicuous and his partner feels a little bit more familiar with some of the other followers, but I think because they were paired up so well together that it created something fresh and new just with those two. So they were they were my overall favorite couple for just having unique movements, not so much with each other, but just the shell of how they look when they're moving is what I loved. And I, and I hope they don't lose that, particularly the leader. His posture was kind of bent over and he had some really choppy little uh, kickball changes and shifts with the footwork. And I appreciate the follower not trying to copy what the leader was doing, but she stayed in her lane and it was just smooth. It was a smoother type of follower. And sometimes these types of dancers end up going in two opposite directions on the extreme. And in the future, they may not mesh as well together if they just dive directly into their styles. But it was really special getting a chance to see them connect in this competition because, uh, you know, it just opposites attract. And in this case, I got a vestige of uh, a sample of both of these dancers at this level. And I can already kind of see where they're going to be, you know, in terms of where dancers usually go. But my, my uh, suggestion for these dancers is please keep going. Please keep the, the thing that makes you naturally you, you. It's really hard to do that, but you guys are my favorite. So let me um, go to my second favorite. Now my second favorite, this couple right here. She had the tan on, he had the tan shirt. What I loved about this couple was her footwork. Man, she had some really, really cool footwork in the swing outs, but what made it work was the fact that this leader loves organization. You can tell that he wants to set up patterns within the music so that him and his partner look good together. And sometimes a lot of dancers love this style. They, they end up not doing a bunch of really like out there crazy movements, but they tend to set up patterns that are more conspicuous for the audience to participate in their dancing by viewing it and kind of nodding their heads 
And dancers like this are incredibly powerful, particularly in Jack and Jill competitions. Usually when they do like a choreographed pieces, it's very organized. You kind of know when things are going to shift and they visually tend to match the music uh, on a macro scale um, the best. And so I will say this couple, please keep doing what you're doing. I love the followers footwork. So this is the exact opposite of the last couple. The follower is the one that had the fancy footwork, a lot of the syncopations. And I liked the fact that she adjusted when the leader was wanting to set up something in the root, in their swing outs that would normally not be done. To do those little stomp offs was great. Like they were doing the shim sham. That was fantastic. But if she would have just simply ignored all of the cues that were coming from the leader in that sense and just kept moving, it still might have worked out, but it might have looked like somebody messed up. So it was really good to see that she could balance syncopations with following. That is so, so hard. And I hope she continues to go in that direction. That is one of the hardest things about the art of following. Um, if you guys want to check out some more tips on the art of following and the art of leading, you can check that out uh, in my school in the description below. I specifically go over this, like how to be yourself and balance that with the, the fundamental swing dancing. And so we go over some exercises to help you discover what makes you unique. So if you like that kind of stuff, check it out. But, sh but this follower, she really embodied that the most to me. And I appreciate her discipline and being able to respond to the leader who was less flamboyant, but more structured and organized. So that was really cool. That was really cool. And then the couple, my last couple, she had a yellow dress on. He had a checkered plaid shirt. Oh, I love this couple's spont spontaneous burst of energy. This, this couple had the best energy for me and just th the random places of uh, movements that were put in odd spots. I loved that about what the leader was doing with fancy footwork, uh, positioning, and ending swing outs with like Charleston movements. A lot of people don't try those types of things, but I liked the spontaneous nature of their dancing. There was just an energy level that was really high but it wasn't to the point where it was distracting from their overall aesthetic that made them look like they had control of the technique. So if I had to put the, be the best combination of these three dancers or these three couples together into one massive dancer, that would be my ideal dancer. One who just has unique style, who doesn't look like anybody else, like the first couple, then the one that's organized with their thoughts, where they're not just being strange for being strange and it comes across as being pretentious, but actually being able to organize their thoughts so they both look good and being able to have some spontaneous burst of energy so that nothing really looks contrived and overproduced. That's your ultimate dancer for me and your ultimate couple. Man, I tell you what, it, the, the couple could be either way. They could vacillate where the leader's more syncopated and uh, or more polished and relaxed and the follower could actually be more polished or relaxed or more syncopated and sometimes it works best when they're contrasting sometimes it works best when they're together and they share the same qualities but either way i would take the qualities of these three couples and put them together man it would be amazing so what do you guys think who was your favorite couple who would you mix together to create the the most ultimate lindy hop couple of all time let me know in the comment section below I don't see your comments below. Hopefully, I get a chance to see some of you in my class online. Take care.